Now, as we've been hearing this morning, COVID vaccinations are to become compulsory for care home workers in England, with staff expected to be given 16 weeks to get the jab. Consultations will also begin on the same rule for other health care workers. Let's talk now to this morning's GP, Dr Mohit Mandirata. Morning. Good to speak to you as ever. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, what do you think about this idea that uh, coronavirus uh, vaccines will be mandatory? Good morning. Um, I think it, it's a very delicate topic. I think, you know, we saw the impact, particularly talking about care home staff. We saw the devastating impact of the pandemic, um, you know, early on last year in March, April, and how many people were affected in care homes. We know that age is the biggest risk factor in terms of COVID uh, and that the number of lives lost. And, and that's why the vaccination program is focused on the highest risk so that the oldest age groups first and those clinically vulnerable. Now, absolutely, we want to protect them. And part of that is vaccinating them. I, I've been vaccinated with both of my doses. I know all of my colleagues and friends who work in the NHS have been vaccinated as well. I think, obviously, from that perspective, we'd want everybody vaccinated who's working with, with these at-risk groups. However, obviously, uh, we'd also want to respect patient choice, patient autonomy, and we always want to do that as medical professionals. So I think I find it difficult to say that it, things will be compulsory or mandatory. I think more important, and we found that as we've been um, trying to tackle hesitancy and complacency, you know, the data's out there. Everybody can see whether they're in the NHS or outside the NHS, how safe and effective vaccines are. So I think it, for me, it's more about exploring why they haven't had the vaccine. And often that takes one-to-one -one conversations because the decision can be very personal. So I would want everybody vaccinated, but I think it, it has to be done in a very careful way. That's my personal opinion on it. Right, that's really interesting. So you, um, I mean, from what I hear from what you're saying, um, encouraging, not forcing might be a better option in your view? That's how I would always work as a medic. So, you know, when, whenever we're talking about any treatments, any investigations even, you'd talk about the, the pros and cons of it. And, and the pros are so massive for everyone to see. So I would want to take everyone on the journey that I've been on with having the vaccination. And I had no hesitation with taking it because I know the data that's there. And uh, yeah, for me, with, with when we've been ta tackling hesitancy and complacency, I've found, especially recently, it is one-to-one -one conversations that have sort of got to the bottom of why people are hesitant and complacent and, and, and sort of taking them on that route with me. Um, I, I always find it uncomfortable to force people to do anything. But equally, you know, if I had a relative in a care home, I'd want to know that they were protected as much as possible. And part of that is vaccinating. Um, I just want to know a little bit about um, how the vaccine programme is going where you are, because we understand from the, the chief executive of NHS England that the vaccine supply continues to be constrained, particularly talking about Pfizer, actually. Are you seeing that there are issues with getting Pfizer's? I have to say, locally, we, we haven't seen that. So obviously, we're, we're on to the over 23s at the moment, and there's an expectation that we'll move very quickly on to the over 18s with, with the hope that we'll have um, all adults offered at least one dose of the vaccine by the 19th of July. I think that combined with the fact that, there were, that we're accelerating second doses for everybody over 40, I would hope that supply isn't an issue because we continue to work hard. Locally, I've not seen that, but obviously all the way along, the two constraining factors have been patient willingness to have the vaccine, which Thankfully, we haven't seen as we've got into younger age groups. We heard about the Glastonbury star rush when we moved on to the, the under 30s and also supply of vaccines. So back in April, things did slow down a little bit. But touch wood so far locally that we, we haven't seen any supply issues. Uh, just one final question, uh, ministers. We understand that at least it reports this morning in the Daily Telegraph will be advised against the mass rollout of COVID vaccination, vaccinations to children. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So, you know, thankfully and very reassuringly in terms of COVID-19, children are minimally affected in terms of severe disease, which is really, really reassuring and pleasing to see. Um, we do vaccinate children for other conditions, measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, polio, these sort of things. I think we've always been driven by data and, and science. So because we know children are so safe from a COVID perspective generally, obviously, if they were to be vaccinated, that will be for a population benefit to save lives of those more vulnerable. So in the United States and Canada, they are vaccinating younger age groups that have done trials in 12 to 15 year olds, showing the vaccine is safe. I think it'll be interesting to see what the data shows from those sort of countries. And obviously, we'll, we'll be following the guidance here if, if that changes from the um, Joint Committee's background. Good, good to talk to you again. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.